Hey guys, Simcoder here, and today we are going to learn how we can upload posts, or better yet, tweets, to our database. We are going to create our Firestore database, and we are going to learn how to use it in the most basic way, which is just to make a simple post to it. So uh, this lesson should be uh, really fast, you should gain some comprehension about how Firestore works, and uh, you'll see if you've worked with, uh, for example, Mongo in the past, then it is really similar. It is also NoSQL, uh, and it is document-based, uh, so uh, it has its pros and cons, uh, the cons being that the more complicated queries will be a bit trickier to do, uh, but the pros are that it is really fast to learn and really fast to develop on. So yeah, let's do it. If the video is going a little too slow for you, then feel free to change the speed of the video in the video settings. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I have uh, our development um, workplace up and running. I have uh, the emulator already running from the project as we left it uh, in the previous lesson. So now what we are going to do is to install um, Cloud Firestore in our uh, Flutter project. And we do this by going into pub.dev and finding cloud underscore Firestore. Uh, so make sure you are running the, the latest version. Copy that and go into the pubsec file. Okay, then we are going to come into the dependencies and simply add the cloud Firestore. Uh, after you save it, uh, it will probably start running Flutter pub get, which is just fetching the dependencies. And that's it. Now we have Firestore in our project. Now, uh, what we have to do is to enable Firestore in our database. So uh, I have already uh, initialized it in the project that we are using. So I'm going to come into the snapshot project and show you how to do it. So go into Firestore and uh, simply uh, create a database. So uh, now uh, we are going to run it in test mode. Test mode is better when we are developing so that we aren't restricted by anything. And this is because the security rules in Firestore, uh, you uh, define what access, kind of access, the user has to each single document. Uh, it, isn't, uh, it is a bit different from other databases and how you do the validation, but in Firestore, it is like this. So. Uh, if you want to launch this, uh, this project for uh, development, publish it on the Play Store, for example, then you should spend some time actually uh, typing down security rules for it. But for now, we are going to just uh, start it in test mode as we don't want to worry about it. Now, you can enable it, uh, that you are able to set the location of the server. I'm going to leave it as the default one and give it some time. Okay, so after it has finished setting up, uh, it should look like this. And if you go into rules, which is where we set up our security rules, uh, you'll see that uh, the read uh, allow read and write. And this just means that every single document um, will uh, be uh, allowed to read and write independently of uh, if the user is logged in, if the user's ID corresponds to the post ID, for example, things like that. But this will only be up and running until uh, these dates. So this is the way that uh, Firebase kind of forces you to think about it. Um, you, you'll stop being able to read and write after this date. So uh, you can simply remove this line, for example, if you are still developing after that. But coming into the database itself, we see that we uh, get a start collection button and nothing else. So uh, data Firestore is divided into two main components, the collections and the documents. So if I open up a collection, and for this lesson, you don't have to type this down, but I'll just so show you how it looks, we'll, be ha we'll have posts. And then you see that we get this uh, form where we can simply set an auto ID, for example, which will be the post ID, and we can set the fields. So for example, we'll have a text, we'll say, which will say subscribe to SimCoder, for example. It will be of the type string, and you have a bunch of types in here. Uh, then we'll have the creator ID, for example, which will contain the ID of the user. Again, uh, this will be a type string, and then we'll have a timestamp, uh, which let me sh see if it can auto-create it. Uh, no, but we can set a time and things like that, so yeah. Let's hit save and see what it shows us. Okay, so you can see that we have a collection. Inside that collection, we have a document with a, an auto-generated ID, and then we have the parameters of that document. 
So this is how everything is structured out. Uh, we have collections which are, which are kind of like boxes. And then we have uh, papers that go inside it, which are the documents. And uh, so every single post will be contained inside of this collection. And then we'll have other collections for our things that are related, related to our project. So, for example, users and uh, chats, things like that. And uh, it is a really specific structure because you can have a collection with, inside a document and then that document can have another connect collection inside it. So that's more complicated. We won't get into that today. You just have to know that this uh, um, structure exists. You can have unlimited documents inside a collection, but each document can only contain information uh, with at most, at most one uh, megabyte. So uh, be conscious of that. We, you don't want to go above it. If you have a really large document with a lot of information, then you'll probably want to start a collection to store that data somewhere else. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. So uh, now let's learn how we can actually upload a post to uh, Firestore and you'll see that it is really straightforward. Okay, but before that, uh, we must create an ad page. This page will allow the user to type down a tweet and send it. In this lesson, we'll just learn how to make tweets with text, plain text, and not with images. That will be left for further on in the uh, series. Okay, so coming in here, uh, I'm going to go into screens and wrapper.art. This is because we'll be creating a, a route system in our main part of the app so that we can uh, go around each uh, screen. So we want to be in the home screen, we want to be in the ad screen. We have to uh, have that data stored somewhere so that the app can know exactly how to go to each page. So that's done by coming in here and instead of return home, we'll do something a bit different. In this case, it will be uh, return material app. And in the return material app, we'll be able to set the initial route of our project. So uh, this will work kind of like an URL, so it is really simple. So the initial route will be just a forward slash. So imagine www.google.com. That's the initial route of Google because it just has a forward slash in front of it. But now we have multiple routes. So uh, we want to create a list of routes and simply do that. Let's make this bigger, okay? And for the home route, it is the same as the initial route. We'll simply say forward slash, two points, and now we pass along the context along uh, with uh, the route that we want. In this case, it will be home and uh, parentheses. okay? Right now, we don't have any other, um, and that, okay, that collapses everything, but right now we don't have any other routes, we just have the home route. So let's create the add page, which will be the add route. So coming into main, I'm going to create a folder, which I'll call posts. And in the, inside this folder, uh, every single thing that has to do with posts will reside. Every single screen that has to do with posts will reside where I add. So we want to add dot dart and add with no capitalized letter. There we go. So this will be our ad screen. And it will be pretty similar to another screen that we have already created. It will be pretty similar to the sign up, okay? Because it has uh, the text form field, it has all of that that's needed for this part of the lesson. So let's learn how to do it. Uh, and we are going to use a stateful widget because we have to keep the state in order to get the, the information from inside the text form uh, fields. And there we go. Call it add and then import material. Uh, this will import the material package, which is uh, again needed in order to get all of the components that we are going to use. So right now, instead of a container, we'll have a scaffold because we will have an app bar, we'll have uh, the body. We have these two different things that have to uh, exist inside it. Okay, so first things first, we are going to handle the app bar. So this app bar will be app bar, uh, it will have actions because we'll uh, the in, in Twitter uh, the app bar has the tweet button up top, so that's why we have to add this to make it as similar as possible to it. Okay, so now you'll have the title, and the title will be of the type text, 
This is uh, exactly what we did in the previous lessons. And let's say add tweets. Okay, then we'll have our actions, which in this case will contain widgets. Or better yet, it will just contain one widget, but yeah, let's call it like this. And inside it, you will have a flat button, which will be responsible for calling a service, uh, which we'll create in the upcoming minutes uh, for um, posting the, the tweets. Don't forget to add the comma there. There we go. So that's it. Now let's try to make this a bit more spacious. There we go. So uh, I'll set the text color to white. White, and this is colors. There we go. And let's set the child. The child, which has already been created with the boilerplate code of the flat button, so uh, we can add it here. It will be of the type text, and it will just say tweet, just like Twitter does. Tweet. Okay, so now uh, we are basically done. Uh, all that's left is to uh, do the on-press, but we still don't have the, um, the file for it. We still don't have that function implemented, so I'm not going to bother uh, with that at the moment. So now uh, what we have to do is to add the text form field. And this text form field uh, will be a lonely text form field. We don't need to do anything else because Twitter is just like that. It has the buttons to add pictures, uh, but we don't uh, want to implement that at the moment. So let's do it. We have to have a body, which will be of the type container, which will contain a widget container, better yet. So let's go down below. Let's add a simple padding. Just make sure nothing touches the, the borders of the screen, which always uh, looks bad. So edge insets dot symmetric vertical. Uh, it will be a padding of 20 and horizontal. It will be a padding of 10. As easy as that, and we have two double points there, okay? Now we'll have the child, which will again contain widgets, uh, or in this case, a single widget, uh, which will be of um, a, a form widget, because remember, this is a form. Um, so we'll have the text form, um, the text form field inside it, uh, and then we'll want to add an action, but in this case, the action will be just a button, as simple as that. Okay, so the child will be uh, text form field, which uh, will have one function inside it, which is unchanged, because we must store the changes that's made uh, that the user makes to the text form field in order to use that variable later on. So unchanged, we are going to get the val from it, which is the text that uh, resides inside text form, the text form field, uh, the updated text. And then we'll set the state of uh, a variable, which we'll create uh, in a second. But now let's assume it is called text. And this text will be equal to val. So anytime the, the text form field updates, this text uh, variable will be updated. So now all that's left is to actually create the variable text. So let's grab it, go up top, and inside the add state class, we are going to say string text equals to nothing. So an empty uh, string, there we go. Save that, and there we go. Now these widgets shouldn't have any issues with that, but we want to uh, be able to go to it. So now uh, we can go into our wrapper and add another route. So let's, first of all, uh, remove the indentation from it, which is a bit odd. Routes, there we go. And we are going to add yet another one which in this case will be add. Uh, later on, we might want to change the name of this route if you want to add another thing, for example, uh, but for now, this is more than enough. So let's add add, and make sure it is imported when you click it, and there we go. Now we have our routes, and this might be a bit tricker, tricky to, to read, so let's do this. And as you can see, we have two routes, one for the home page and one for the ad page. Okay. So now, in the main.dart, uh, we don't have to do anything else. We can close that up. In sign up, we can close that up. 
but we want to go into the home.art and add a floating action button, which will handle taking the user to the add page. And a floating action button, if you don't know, it's just a round button, which is, uh, is looks nice. It is a call to action. So I really enjoy uh, using it in every app that I do because it just gives the material UI feel and look to it. So yeah, it is a cool uh, button that you can use to make your app look a bit better. So uh, right now for the floating action button, we don't actually need the body because that's uh, um, another thing that you can add from the scaffold, which you can see by doing uh, control and hover over scaffold. So if you come in here, you see that uh, floating action button is one of the parameters that we can pass along to scaffold. So it, it makes it really simple to add this button to it. So let's do it. Floating action button will be uh, taking a widget, which will be a floating action button yet again. Open parenthesis, and you see that on press is created automatically for us. Uh, which is actually the, one of the only things that we need. Uh, the other thing that we can add is a child, which will just show an icon uh, in the flat, uh, the floating action button, better yet. So this icon, we can call it by saying icon, which is a widget, and then uh, do icons dot, and you are able to choose from uh, a lot of icons that uh, Flutter has inside it. So. For now, I'm going to choose the add one and an arrow will appear because it doesn't have anything on press. And uh, after saving that, you see that a floating action button appears in here. Okay, so now we want to on press go to uh, another route, which is the add route, this route right here. And how can we do it? Well, it is really simple. All you have to do is say navigator dot push named because we are using named routes uh, you can also go uh, the other way around just calling the classes but in here i'm going to uh, give names to the routes as it make, makes it easier to comprehend and structure out the project in my opinion okay so the route name will be add and you see that there's an error and that's because this expects a function and because of that we must do parentheses and then uh, wrap around the navigator um, what we have inside it with uh, curly brackets. And after that, make sure you add the semicolon at the end. And there we go. Now, if you click it, it will pop up the add route. So awesome, everything is working uh, for now. Uh, and I'm going to remove this ad because this will be just called to it. Okay, so now uh, you see that the tweet button is grayed out. This is because it is set to null. So we must create the, the actions which will uh, post the um, tweet to our database. And that's done by creating a new file in the services uh, folder. So let's come in here and say posts.tarts and this uh, folder, uh, this file better yet, will contain all of the information, all of the functions better yet, uh, that are related to posts. So fetching posts, posting posts, or tweets uh, will uh, come to this file right here. So in this case, it will be a class called post service, open curly brackets, and inside here, we'll just have one function. So it will be a future uh, because we are going to make a request. Remember that from the previous lessons. It will receive a parameter called text, which is the text that comes from here. And then it will be a async, async, and then it will be async because we are going to use wait, await inside it. Um, remember, this is a request, so we aren't sure when to we are going to receive the data from it. So now that we have our Firestore initialized, um, we have everything that's needed. All that we have to do is to simply make the request to add the post to the database, and this is done by doing await. Firebase Firestore and uh, click in here as it will auto import it if you are using VS Code, obviously. As you can see, it the package was automatically added in here. So Firebase Firestore dot instance dot collection. Remember, uh, the collection is the, the box where all the documents reside. Uh, so it is this collection, which is called posts. 
And then we want to add a document which will have an auto-generated -gener ID in here. So if you want to add a document which will have an auto-generated ID, you simply do add. And this add will uh, generate the ID for you and you don't need to worry about anything else. Okay, so which parameters will contain these documents? Will be inside this document, better yet. It will be the text one. So we say text, two points text. This is the name, this is this variable. Then you'll have the creator ID, creator, and then we uh, do what we did previously, which is saying Firebase off, and don't forget to auto import it from there, dot instance, dot current user, dot UID. This will get the ID of the current logged in user. So uh, that's what we want to be in here. Then you'll have the timestamp of the um, creation of this tweet. Timestamp. And in order to uh, get the timestamp, we are not going to get the timestamp of, of the user's device. No, that's incorrect, as each device can have different clock times at any single second. So uh, it is better to use the server's uh, time for this. And Firestore has a function implemented for exactly that purposes. So what we do is call field value dot server timestamp. So when the request reaches the database uh, or Firestore server, it will auto generate a timestamp for these fields. And that's it. Then we can add a semicolon at the end, and there we go. Uh, now, uh, this is basically done. Uh, all we have to do is go into the add dot dart and add the call to uh, make the request. So in this case, that's going to unpressed, do uh, parentheses, async, because remember, uh, it is an async function which we are calling, do uh, curly brackets. Let's push everything down below to make it easier to see. Unpressed, okay. So now we have to, first of all, start up the service, uh, create an instance of the service. And this is done by, as we did in the off service, do final post service, don't forget to auto import, underscore post service equal to post service. Add the semicolon at the end and grab post service. There we go. Now uh, coming back in here, let's add the call uh, right up in here. And this is done by doing post service dot save post and pass along text. As simple as that. However, we want to do one other thing. When this function finishes running, we want to get out of this page and go back to the previous one, to the home page in this case. And we do this by doing navigator, navigator, oops, navigator, like that, dot pop. And within parentheses context, this will pop the navigator stack and move us to the previous screen that we were we were on, which in this case is the home screen. Okay, so save it, and right now it should be all done. So let's try to uh, make a tweet. Subscribe to Simcoder, and let's uh, tweet it. Okay, so the screen popped as we expected from the navigator or pop, and let's go into our database. Let's reload it and see if everything checks out. We expect to see two documents in here and we see that nothing got uploaded as this was the previous one that we had. So coming in here, let's go into the terminal and figure out what went wrong. Let's go into the debug console and uh, it says no implementation found formatted uh, document reference. Okay, this I believe is an import problem. It just didn't reload uh, the packages and doesn't know that Firestore is already installed. So when this happens, the, f the easiest thing to do is to do flutter clean. Let's run it and make sure you are in the front end uh, folder for it to work, obviously. So flutter clean and then run flutter packages get yet again. So let's do it. Okay. Let's rerun the, the, the app. Okay. Let's go in here and let's try to tweet once again. Subscribe to Simcoder. Tweet it. Let's go back, reload the page, and there we go. Uh, but right now I made one small mistake because I uh, previously called posts, but now uh, we see that a collection post is created 
and it has uh, a single document, uh, which is the one that we just created. As you can see, we, it, we have a uh, unique ID and the timestamp is generated to the current time. But let's come in here and actually fix that. So in the post.art, the collection should be posts, okay? And let's come in here and actually delete everything. So post, delete it, and posts, delete it. Okay, let's do that. And let's try to uh, make another uh, tweet like this video. And there we go, tweet it. And let's see uh, how it looks. So reload the page as uh, this doesn't tend to update instantly. And there we go, we have our post created. So everything is working nicely. Okay, so that's all for today. We are able to make posts to our Firestore database. So uh, yeah, now all that's left is to learn how to make queries so that we can fetch data from the database. If you enjoyed this lesson, then please do leave a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any single video uh, from this series in the future. So yeah, that's all. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you again tomorrow and ciao. Thank you.